each author will get 25 minutes for presentations, for 20 minutes for the presentation and 3 minutes for the Now for the first session on mobile collaboration, Professor YouTube won't be the session chair. Uh, in particular, a paper in the session. So, um, we have uh, three papers. The one started, so we have the very sharp thing now. We have got this LOG of 25 minutes for each talk, and we would ask the speaker to spend 20 minutes for the talk, and we could five minutes for the q and The first speaker is the optimizer, the monitoring and improving switching lights. So, uh, and then let me check everybody's here. The second paper, the framework is full sync management of live video streams and collaborative and operative environment. The ROI based video quality systems and regulations for mobile video competition. So, um, I'll start. And the first paper, we. we have different clients which are all connected over audio and video and um, they are all connected over a network and there are I mean, several different ways and architectures to do that um, for example the WebRTC is using a full mesh which is connect where every client sends all the data to all other clients um, obviously um, this generates a, a higher network load as, as necessary so what um, the most professional systems do is they have a central architecture and every stream is sent to a central component and then um, they do some uh, decoding and encoding in the, on the server and send only one stream to the other clients. Um, the disadvantage on this approach is that um, you have um, uh, the, the server is more complex and uh, you also have a delay from this transcoding uh, in the network. So what we want to do is that we move to an architecture where um, the streams are sent individually, so you don't have this additional delay, and also um, the server and the structure is less complicated. And obviously in this kind of in the video conference, you have other components like you need to do user management and all these kind of, kind of, kind of things. Um, which I, I don't want to look at, this is uh, other problems also, I don't want to look at the problem of when to show which, which uh, video uh, to whom, but uh, more um, on how to change the different views. So um, the system, um, our system, or the components I want to look at in our system are um, um, the, the components to like um, multiplex the streams, so um, each client is sending um, different representations of itself to a central video router, and this is then dividing the streams to the different clients. And I have a component which is um, able to manage the whole process and monitor the process um, so that I can actually observe uh, different values. And so I'm not sure if it's really clear right now what, what we actually do. So um, this is now for the video streams. So I want to look at the video streams. And the client is uh, sending um, two representations from itself in our system, which is an HD stream and a VGA stream. And is receiving uh, one HD stream and several VGA streams from the other clients. And um, we are currently doing this with separated uh, AVC H.264 streams. We could also do this with SVC, but this is more a practical um, a reason why we do this, because it's simpler to implement um, and uh, works very nicely and we have a lot of control in this, in this, uh, with this approach. Um, 
is it clear so far? Okay. So, I said we have different representations from different people, so I think this is um, a very um, usual view of a video conferencing system. This is actually um, Google, Google Hangout. And what you see is, usually um, you want to focus on one uh, uh, specific view. So one person is talking, for example, and you want to see this person is talking. You also want to see the other people in the conference, but your main focus is on this person who is talking. And um, I mean, what Google Hangout is doing is it's always switching to the person uh, who is talking by voice, voice uh, activity detection. And what you want to do is, when this person is changing, because we are in communication, we are in a conversation, so the person is changing, so you want to change to the other, other view. And what you need to do is, you need to exchange the low resolution stream to, to the higher resolution stream and the other way around. So the higher resolution stream you want to make sure to um, have a better use of your bandwidth. So, um, what's the problem here? I mean, first of all, this switching, when you want to exchange the streams, it just takes time. And in this time, especially when we have um, the H.264, uh, we, we need to wait for an iframe to actually correctly display um, the new stream. And in this process, there can problems can happen that we get distortions. And um, to show you this a little bit better, I um, found a video on, uh, on YouTube, which is um, where you can see how the switching works. And you see in the in the times where you switch to to a new view for for um, a couple for like a few hundred milliseconds, and the picture gets disordered. And this is very different for the different users because they have different error conditions and uh, different capabilities and um, um, I think it's visible that, um, for, I mean, especially when you only have, when you have a lot of switches, um, you cannot even catch up to have a real uh, view of the person, but you end up with lots of blurry pictures. And uh, I think this is not a very a pleasant, I mean, obviously this is not a very pleasant user experience. And this is the problem I was looking at in this, uh, in this paper. So, um, so what was I doing? First of all, we want to look at this um, conditions under different uh, network um, restrictions. So first, um, I was trying to find some uh, some network conditions from from different countries from the world. Um, uh, then I'm doing some <coughs> simulations. So we built um, some some uh, some infrastructure so that we can simulate different conditions, and then I measure. Um, the switching delays and try to find um, problems and to improve it. And then I also evaluate um, this afterwards. So what did I do to find different uh, network conditions? So um, I took um, eight um, locations and I, my assumption was that we have our server structure in Amsterdam, which is I mean, where I work, so, so this, I took this as the base for, for my approach. And then I took network measurements from this uh, eight positions towards um, this central, central structure. And I used um, iPerf for that and, so, and ping for the, for the delay. And this run over um, at least half an hour to a couple of hours on these locations. And then I got several measurements. Um, I, a couple of things I want to mention for this is um, here I used uh, TCP because um, my, my iPerf failed with the UDP transmission. So, but in our systems, we, in our system we use UDP. So this is not um, accurate uh, uh, profiling data for our use. But what I mainly are interested here is the delays. So. You can take this as an indicator here, or at least that I have some basis on how to um, make my simulation. But obviously, the, um, the, the bandwidth part is not accurate for, for all my measures. But the delay is perfectly fine. And I, I, because eight conditions are too much later to show, I structured them in two parts according to the, the um, 
to the um, network capabilities, so in the root and in the port connection. And you, I will show you later how I did this. Um, because when um, I did, after the measurements, it's very visible that there is a gap between these two um, groups. So back to um, our testing architecture. So I said we have the video rotor and we have the optimizer. And from my test, I used three clients. And I used something called the Vanbridge. So I had two computers. One computer was running um, the Vanbridge, which is NetM for doing network, um, um, network um, simulations. And then I, I, um, I did, um, in an interval, I did switches and I changed the network conditions. And what I did is I always put two clients in one location and the third one in a different location, which is also uh, practical reasons because then I can easily switch and also I, can, uh, I, I get a lot of measurement data between the same location. This was my intention. So, um, I talked already a bit about switching, um, but I wanted to explain you in more detail um, how we do achieve the switching in our system with the management component and the video router. So, um, what happens here is, uh, when we want to uh, switch, um, so what, what's happening here is we, we switch on client A two streams, so we want to show client 3 in a good quality, and client B in a lower quality, so we are switching to the view of client, client uh, C. And first of all, uh, what uh, the management component here does, the optimizer is doing, is we initiate the switching at the client A. And we want to connect the streams. This is both coming in parallel. And what we get back is that the video router is um, acknowledging that it made the connections, and the client A is also acknowledging that he's ready to um, show the different streams. And when we, have, when we know that, then we can request an iframe from the client. And so what we do here is we can issue iframes <coughs> at the different clients, and the clients are also monitoring when they get an iframe after the switch, so that the client A can then inform us when he got the iframe and when he made a successful switch to the other clients. So this is the um, essential part of how our switching, switching works. Is this also clear? Yeah. So this is now the results of the um, HD uh, switching. And you can see um, under the uh, good conditions it works very well. And under the poor conditions it works not very well. And you can also see a clear gap here. So this is why I made this um, separation to then better present you the results. And in, um, I think the next slide is the, is the actual results. So we have in the in the blue is the um, in the light blue is the VGA switching, and the dark um, color is the is the HD switching. Um, and yeah, again, I mean, you can see um, you, that you have um, quite here some 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 huge um, switching switching times, and you also have quite a lot of uh, variation in our switching. And uh, there are two specific um, problems or two specific phenomena I, I I was able to observe. This is what I want, would like to show you. So the first is. Um, between good clients, uh, even in the VGA, there was a problem that uh, occasionally the iframe was not um, received in time. And in this case, the switching went quite up. And here, this is something I didn't mention yet, is our, our usual iframe rate was uh, 5 seconds. So here you can see, occasionally it just took another iframe to actually switch uh, to the other stream. And um, I cannot, I can only make assumption of how this happens, but what I can say is it's very, um, uh, it's reproducible and it's observable that this happens. So obviously I want to eliminate this. And I mean, five seconds is maybe not the best rate in, in a production system, but for us it's very good because it's very visible to observe uh, this effect here. And when you go 
this was between uh, two good clients. And when you go to a good, um, switching of between um, a poor client and a good client, so what we here uh, see is um, you want to show at a good client to a poor client in the HD stream, you have a very scattered graph. So this is a, um, this is, um, a really bad switching behavior with really lots of delays. And um, also what I have to mention here is I mean, the, um, the conditions, the network conditions I used are actually quite low especially because of this bandwidth uh, uh, situation I, I, I said before. So we get a very exaggerated problem here, which is, um, I can, I'm not sure if I can say this, if it's not realistic or realistic, because I mean, at least the measurement data that I had is, uh, I mean, a good indicator of the real network condition between these two countries. But, um, the, the general behavior here is more exaggerated behavior we, we can observe. But what we want to do is clearly we want to eliminate or we want to improve this uh, switching delays. So what you can do um, for this is um, you can do general iframe retransmit uh, with RT RTP data. But the problem here is we're dealing with um, with non-usual iframe. So the iframe is sent out of the normal rate because we want to have the iframe when we switch and we don't want to wait our usual iframe uh, period. So, um, and when you implement this in the clients, you could do that, but it's, it's giving, um, it's, it's, it's raises the complexity in, in the implementation there. And with what we wanted to have is a more central approach so that we have more capabilities on the central domain. Also maybe to um, issue iframes in correlation so that we can say like, okay, now the three clients are switching, so now we issue the iframe rather than that each client individually deals with this problem. And what you could, the other approach you could use is that the video router is dealing with this and that you switch on, on iframes and um, Somehow, all everything took me a bit longer, so I want to speed up a bit. Anyway, this also raises the um, problem in the router. So what we did is um, we monitor centrally the switching time, and we make the average of the switching time, and then we see if uh, it takes too long, we just issue another iframe. And in this way, um, this is the <coughs> results of the. Um, uh, the improvement of uh, the VGA stream switching, so you can see that the deviation is much smaller and the switching is also generally improved. And the same counts for the um, HD situation. So, um, in, in conclusion, um, the network condition has uh, quite a huge impact on the switching delays, and I think it's essential to monitor this in order to improve this problem. Um, what is unclear currently is um, what the impact is on the user, because um, I don't have any data on, on uh, what's appropriate switching times or what's appropriate switching behaviors uh, in this situation, because it's not uh, studied. And um, I was hoping that we can um, discuss about this a little bit, or that you maybe give us some questions. So the data I have is, I mean, usually in video conferencing, you have, you want to have um, 100 to 600 milliseconds um, delay um, for switching. Can you just compare this? I, I'm, I don't know. And but comparing this to usual face-to-face uh, -face communication, usually the switch between different people takes 500 milliseconds to one second. So in this case. In our system, in the good conditions, is under 500 milliseconds, so I guess that would be appropriate, but I guess you have to test that. So what I would like to do is, um, I would uh, like to have better network profiles based on UVP data, include RTCP measures for um, uh, high accuracy, and do user studies. Thank you very much. So the Google Hangout thing is a VPA encoder underneath the Yes. So 
Um, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is that part of the problem with the switching is the fact that you're changing your context, right? Um, I mean, to some degree, the, the, the problem is you're multiplexing five streams yeah. right, onto a single channel. And then when you switch your, your thing, you have an issue, right? Um, you know, so for like video coders now, they're pretty good at detecting when that occurs, and then they just insert an iframe right in front. Um, so I, I guess I'm trying to figure out, I mean, clearly the iframe still causes an issue, right, the size of it. Um, and I'm wondering how much uh, better coding could solve some of these problems, right? You know, for example, if you treated each of these streams completely separate and just did differential coding, right? And then when it when you switch, just said, hey, the stream is stopped, right? And you don't transmit anything for that stream. And then when it comes back on, you just pick up where you left off. Um, Do you think that would impact? Yeah, I mean, as I said, there are several solutions. But first of all, I mean, um, you you don't completely change the context, right? I mean, the context is still the same, but. I mean, you, you have a consistent presence of the other person, but it's small. Right, right. And then it becomes big, and right. it becomes small. So, um, at the moment, at least, this kind of um, problem of like switching, I mean, in what you usually do, for example, in SVC, is you, you switch between different layers. Right. But you do this because, usually you do this because there are problems in the network, right? Right. And then you wait, and you have some transition period. Right. but usually that's not off, so often occurring where it is in video conferencing systems and um, so as I said you, you, you can probably also integrate it more in this in this coding so that you can issue from client to client um, a request of an iframe an extraordinary request because you switch the layers but I'm, I mean I'm coding is not my world right so I'm not sure if this is really the best solution but Every time you issue an iframe, everybody receives this iframe, right? Yeah, yeah. So you also increase this problem then over yeah. the whole period of time. Yeah. But I mean, this is an interesting task to follow, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how do you monitor? Is there you monitor latency? Yes. Is there any overhead of monitoring the latency if the data occurs in the overhead to the system? Uh, so, um, Again, what, what we do is we can issue uh, iframes, we can say like send an iframe, and the client is monitoring after the switching this if an iframe arrives or not. So the iframe then sends an acknowledgement. And what I do is um, I monitor this time of saying I'm starting my switching process and I receive the acknowledgement. So I think the overhead is, is as good as neglectable. I mean, this happens in parallel to detect in the client, if it's an iframe or not. And it's, it's another message, but it's not a choice for the people. Yeah. All right, so any further questions? Uh, can I ask one question? Why is this one, <clears throat> if, I, if I do not get the iframe, the delay will be so long, right? What, what is the problem with the delay is so long? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if I under, understand. understand. Uh, I mean, the, I mean the, you have a delay time, right? Why is it the lead time is so long? Is it there any problem with the issue with the networking or? Yeah, so I mean there are several issues. I mean the networking is one issue, um, but the, there there are several issues um, issues colliding. And at the moment I also cannot really say exactly what the issues are. Um, and I mean my approach here is more that I want to observe this and I want to fix this no matter what the problem is. Okay. But I think there are also many issues which you could also track down and um, individually uh, address. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you. Thank you.